Hello, hello, it is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm super excited you're here with me tonight. So tonight, we are taking a tour of my classroom. We just had open house tonight, so my classroom is almost ready. Obviously, it's not perfect. A classroom never really is, right? We're always adding and making it even better every single day. So, like, like everybody's classroom, my classrooms are a work in progress, but I wanna take you guys on a tour. I'm gonna show you my classroom, all my centers, everything. So in the comments, could you tell me what kind of classroom you have? Do you have a half day classroom, a full day classroom? Do you teach preschool, kindergarten, full day, or preschool, kindergarten, pre-K, TK, any of the Ks, um, or a toddler or infant? What do you teach? So that way we can get to know each other in the comments too. And if you wanna continue the conversation after this is over, hop over to the Facebook group and and we can keep talking over there. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys everything, even my storage area. So, like I said, I'm a full day, let me tell you real quick a little bit about me. I'm a full day, I'm a half day classroom. I used to teach full day for 11 years. This is my second year teaching half day. I have a multi-age classroom, so I have a mixture of three, four, and five-year-olds um, all together in one big happy half day um, family. I have another teacher that works with me on on um, Wednesdays and Fridays, and then the other day I teach is on Monday, and I, it's just me on Monday, so I have um, nine kids. So yeah, let me show you guys around. I'm gonna flip it around. All right, so this is my classroom. So I'm actually gonna back it up. Back it up, back it up. So when you walk into my classroom, this is kind of what you see. So I have blocks, and then discovery in there, and I have pretend. And then at the back of the room, I have my cubbies and kind of my like message board. And then I have the kitchen and then the art center. And then I have the, the library center and then I have my circle time area. And then there is the door my family comes in. The families come in and I do teach out of my home. I am a state licensed facility. So that's why my classroom looks a little bit different than um, typical preschools. So I'm gonna show you each part first and then I'll show you all the outside and then the storage areas. So this is my circle time area. The rug is an outdoor rug and it's from Target. I made a grid with thin duct tape and thick duct tape. Um, that way the kiddos just have a visual reminder of where they should, like a visual re reminder of their space um, and where they can sit for circle. Um, so they're not invading other people's spaces, <laughs> space as much as possible anyways. And the reason why I have the rainbow around the edge is because sometimes for gross motor or maybe for different um, circle time activities, we um, stand on the rainbow and do different activities. So we either sit in the middle for circle and want, when I read and do all those things, or sometimes we um, go around and they sit on the rainbow. So it's just a really easy to way for me to tell them where I need them to be. So I can be like, you know, find a square or um, stand on the rainbow. All right. And then I have my visual schedule, and there it is all the way down. And at the top of this post, you will see, um, there's two links. There's a link to my TBT store and my blog. So on my blog, you can read about my schedule, and then on my TBT store, you can actually buy my visual schedule. And all of my decor, like my schedule, all my posters and things, they either come in this, rainbow um, border or they come in a just like a um a, it's like a um just a black a black square border so that's that's just that way if you maybe do like teals and things like that it would match so it's like a more of a simple decor i call it anyways and then i have my circle time rules which are also available in my tpt store and then i have my easel which I love, and what the one side is magnetic, the other side is felt, but I do not even use the other side. And then one of my favorite things is underneath my easel, I keep little, this, I keep little supply tubs and clipboards because we um, move around the room or when we are, um, you know, doing things at circle, I can just grab a bucket. And then I can put them out and we can, they can grab clipboards and we can do things and, that, and then there are scissors and glue and then these are those bounce back scissors um, on who need help um, opening and closing. 
So, and I also use these a lot for small group. I can just grab what I need and then the kiddos actually know where to put it back to. And then this is my circle um, sign. So I have four kids per center. You can see I don't have enough clips yet. I actually need to paint some more. Um, but my, I have five centers in my classroom. I have art, blocks, discovery, library, and pretend, and they're all color coded. Five days or so, that way they can get to know what's in each center. And then I have my green and red choices, which is what I use for behavior. You can see my green choices board is a lot <laughs> bigger than my red choices board, because obviously, I, I want to focus on those positive behaviors rather than the negative ones. Um, so, and actually I sit right here. So most of the time <laughs> the red choice board is covered. So that way I can focus on those green choices. And then I have our class rules. We take care of ourselves, each other, our school and our world. Um, and then the chairs are from Walmart. I think I saw somebody ask. <laughs> and then um, those are in my store as well. And they're, um, I love these rules because they're very kid friendly. It's not like be responsible because of what, what three year old knows what that means. But they do, if you say, oh, you need to take care of yourself, that, that makes more sense to them. So I love, love these rules. And then I have my linear calendar. And you can read all about a linear calendar on um, my blog and total real life because I totally forgot to print the last page of my calendar numbers. So I need to do that before school starts. Ha <laughs> ha. What kind of printer do I use, Crystal asked. So I use HP printers and I'm on the Instant Ink program so I get like 500 pages a month. Um, and I actually have a blog post about it so click over to my blog and search printing tips and you will find that there. And then I have my alphabet chart on a string. That way if we can, if they want to, if we need to take it down, we can take it down um, and talk about it and it's just on a ribbon with little itty bitty clips or clothespins. And I won't be able to clip that back up. <laughs> and then over here are all kind of like my teacher stash. <laughs> um, I have a couple pocket charts in case I want to pop them up on the board um, for an activity. And then I have post-it notes because we use, we graph a lot with post-it notes. And then I just have those magnetic letters from Target. Um, I have my problem solving choices. And then I have magnet shapes and magnet numbers. And then I actually printed my, my letter posters smaller. And I also have a small green and red choice board here. That way if a kiddo needs to hold it, they can hold it. Or if I need to use it for a small group one day, I have it little. And then I have the extra ones on the back. That's really fun. And it's the same cards as this. I just print the cards smaller, like two to a page or something. And then I have my caddy with all my teacher markers and chart and then blue and then my five more minutes sign that way when there's five more minutes left to play um at the end of centers i can a kiddo or me can walk around and give them a visual and verbal reminder that the play time is all or center time is almost over so the easel somebody's asking about the easel i actually found at a garage sale i was a super lucky duck <laughs> um otherwise i want to say it's either from lakeshore or discount school supply but i love this one um, I actually had this one when I taught full day too. And then I have our cleanup routine visual and all of the visual supports are all in my TPT store as well. So you can just go there, buy it and print it and you don't have to make it. Um, Monica the, asked, does the linear calendar, sorry, I probably made you guys dizzy. Does the linear calendar, I'm wiggling. Does the linear calendar have days of the week in it? And it does, I just don't use days of the week because I do preschool and it's a little bit hard for them to understand. We do talk about like today is Monday and things, but um, yeah. And then I do keep a cheat sheet of, my, of our day over here. And then I also have puppets under there because we use puppets a lot for um, when we do class meetings and when we talk about, when we do character activities and things. And then also at my circle area, I have my computer because up there I have, <laughs> I have my TV and I kind of use it like an interactive whiteboard-ish, like we do Go Noodle up there, but we don't watch movies, so don't think I use it for that. And then I just have my pointers and apparently my kiddo's Pokemon cards. <laughs> and I am totally old school, you guys, just because I haven't had time to do it. I still use all my CDs. Um, sorry, these have a kid lock on them because there's cords in here. 
but I want to show you what's inside. So I have my birthday box, which is like from the 80s it looks like, and then I have all my CDs. And then I have my all my calendar stuff in here. And then in here I have green and red pieces. I have, this is what I use for reading log prizes. If they bring back in their reading log, they get to pick something. And then all my question of the week packs are in here. And then I do have my extra ones, um, my extra uh, visual routine in here that I don't use very often and the clocks. And then underneath I have more music and movement type things. So I have like our egg shakers in here and our musical instruments. And back there in those bags are scarves and ribbons. And then in here it's kind of like my random box. And then I have pom-poms from the dollar store, but like these we use for like balance beans and things. When we do obstacle courses, I have bean bags, yoga cards, paper plates for ice skating, um, mats for different gross motor activities. And I do have a parachute in there and a, a nice bouncy ball. So there is that. And a lot of that stuff is from the dollar store, except for obviously like the parachute. <laughs> And then over here, this is my library center. And if a couple things are out of place, it's because, like I said, I just had open house. And I also want to say, too, this is not what my classroom will look like on the first day because I will pull some of the stuff off of the shelves on the first day. Um, so there, my shelves will not be this full. I'll probably have maybe one cubby open, and I'll probably have nothing on the top that first, probably first couple weeks. Um, but this is the library center, so I have... A book basket which I need to put black dots on some of these books but these are our favorite books and these books stay out all year yes Stephanie asked what the blue microphone was so the blue microphone is for when they are sharing at circle um, or when we're doing like a transition and they have they want have to tell the group something they can totally share with the microphone it just helps those shy kiddos um, want to talk in front of the group and then so our favorite books always have these black dots but I need to put like every classroom mine's not all the way done um, I need to put black dots on those, and those stay out all year. And then I have all kinds of fine motor and literacy stuff in my library center. Um, and all these labels I just put in my TPT store, I think like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks. But these are all in my TPT store. I did take all the pictures myself, so the pictures aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. I tried to edit them best I could. Um, so these are letter Legos from Lakeshore and then I also have dry erase pockets and then in, I need to put their name cards in so like this is one from last year that was accidentally stuck in there <laughs> so I'll just have their name um, their names in here and they love this this is one of my kiddos that was returning it was her favorite activity and these are a freebie in my store so I have those, and this is one of the things that will not be out the first day because dry erase markers in the first day do not mix, right? We need to teach them how to use those things. And then gears, which I still need to put the label on for, which I do have, I just forgot. And then I have some pigs, which is great fine motor and visual, um, that visual discrimination. And then I have letter beats, and then I have some puzzles, and I do have memory, but I will say, I do not put out all the memory cards because that's really overwhelming for a three-year-old. <clears throat> so I just have maybe like, I don't know, what is that? I'm really bad at estimation. So what is that, like 20 cards? Maybe like 10 sets. So I just have some of them in there so it's not overwhelming. And then I have my Lego robot or letter robots, number robots, which they love. And then I have these letter cookies. They're just from Amazon, and I actually will, I forgot to do it, I will put a link in to Amazon, and it has a lot of these things in there, because these are all my favorite things. <laughs> and then I have letter locks, which are from Lakeshore. I usually have writing trays here, I just don't have any out, because I was scared to do it on the on open house. And then I have letter stew, which this is in my TPT store. There, oh, there, there are the cards. So they pick a card. And then they pick that letter and they put it in their pot. And then, oh, sorry. Then they, so how you play letter stew is, real, real quick. They pick a card. Then they pick the letter. And they put it on their spoon. And dump it in. And then they mix it up. 
And then you can talk about the letter or the sound. And this is the uppercase chart. And I do have a lowercase underneath. That way I can um, differentiate for all my learners. And then this is my magnet board. And I usually have a story here so they can retell a story. Um, and these are actually, I actually copied my cheat, my total cheat way to um, make story cards is the color copy the pictures from the book and then just cut them out. And then I have brown bear, brown bear, and I will probably get rid of this one for the first day so there's not two stories at once. Um, and then I just have those jumbo magnet letters that are super fun. And then also in my library center, I have my library table. Oh, and I'm the this white shelf is from Ikea. This is from Lakeshore. And then this is a small coffee table from Ikea. I want to say it's the LAC um, coffee table, and it's the small one. <coughs> and then these tools are from Ikea, too. So then I just have a pocket chart, and I change this out based on our theme. And once I have, we have our first day, um, I'll put the kids' pictures up there. I'll make the name cards with the kids' pictures. Those will be up for a couple weeks. Um, but you can find these when you sign up for my newsletter. You get this um, family and holiday um, writing, writing pack for free. So make sure you hop over the website and sign up for my newsletter. And these are a freebie. And if you already are on my newsletter, so my, um, my writing center link is always at the bottom in purple if you need to download it again. And then I just have out like writing paper, which this is in that pack too. And then I have event cards, like happy birthday, you know, all those things that they want to write all the time. And I do have the cards also in lowercase. They're just in this bucket. So yeah, I have, oh God. Since I teach upper, or since I teach three, four, and five year olds, we work on uppercase first, the first semester. We really get those uppercase down and get get writing them correctly and then we switch over to lowercase and then I just use these little buckets and that, like this one has stickers and envelopes just different things to get them excited about writing and then I have my school books on the library sh on the library bookshelf because I always switch out the books based on our theme and I don't know if you guys are familiar with this but um this my school many cultures there's a whole series it's like there's a school um my house my family birthdays in many cultures but it's really great for um just to um for kiddos to be exposed to different cultures um and communities so that's a great book um for that <coughs> um and then the bottom of my bookshelf we use for class books we make um and then we have our book hospital which you can see i never fixed the books from the end of last year and then I have our reading buddies, which these signs are in my TPT store. I do have the plain decor ones too. And these are where I put those like Kohl's care for, for kids usually in there. I just got these, like this is the Pinkalicious and Peep the Cat and Clifford I had from last year, I think, and Dr. Seuss. And I have Rainbow Fish. I found him at the dollar store. So yeah, so they can grab Buddy and they can read. Sorry, I'm getting up. And then I do have a visual reminder. Um, for them in different ways they can take care of our books. So that is the library center. Oh, and if you want these big, big signs, because I'm sorry, but I, I can't cut out those fancy letters like some of these teachers are doing right now. And I, I just, I'm, I don't have patience cutting and I know that's not my strength. So I just print them out, big letters, and I don't even cut them out. I just leave them like that. And if you go to my Go to my blog, there's a link, like a tutorial on how to do it. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, and then the spatulas. Somebody's asking about the spatulas. This is just magnetic tape that I hot glued on. Yeah. All right, so that is library. You can see it right there, my little library. Library. And then that was circle. Colors are kind of together. And then, so um, if you want to know more about how I manage centers, um, I'll pop a link in to um, <clears throat> my past Facebook Lives because I've done a whole video on center time management or you can hop over to my blog. I have a whole blog post on how to introduce centers that way kiddos stay in their centers longer. So yeah. 
because that's a whole topic I can talk forever on. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I'll put the link in for you when we're done. All right, so this is the Discovery Center. Let me back up so I can give you kind of like a wide angle. So my Discovery Center has science and it has math. And like I said, this is not what it'll look like on the first day. Like, I probably won't have my stew out on the first day. And I'll have the shelves a little bit more empty <coughs> on the first day. Um, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Sorry. All right. So, on my math shelf, which is in my Discovery Center, on the top, I always I'm, I started making these counting stews last year. And they are so much fun. Um, my stew usually goes always right here. And so how you play the counting stew is you pick a recipe card and like this one would be six bears, four Play-Doh balls, which is just, um, what's it called? Just pom-poms and then eight blocks, which is just Legos. And they put it in their pot and then they mix it up. And it's just a really fun counting game, um, hands-on counting game. And there is also a way to make it adding. Um, that way if you, whoops, just tripped. Or if you're, if you teach kinder, um, yeah, you can make it, you can bump it up in the middle of the year. And then this is the math shelf. So you can see I have, um, dice and then this is actually a random bucket of counters. So you can see it's all different counters. Um, and then I have ice cube trays, which we love these ice cube trays because they can use these little pom poms and they can use gator, those gator tweezers and put them in there. So it's really great fine motor. Um, and then they can just pop them back in and if they get stuck, they can poke up. So it's great fine motor. It's great for counting, one-to-one -one correspondence, all that good stuff. And then I just have some simple path games and these are um, a freebie on, my on the website. And then I have these shape cookies, which they, kiddos love these shape cookies. They are on Amazon. And then I just have some foam shape beads for, um, for learning about shapes and for um, fine motor strength. And I actually use pipe cleaners at the beginning of the year because it's easier for them to string pipe cleaners than it is string, but I do have them in there. I do have regular string in there too. Um, so that way they can use what's, what um, works for them. And then I have counters and then I have geo boards. And then I have little those loom bands with my geo boards. And like I said, these labels are my TPT store. They took me forever to make, so totally grab them and save yourself a whole bunch of time. All right, and then this is my science table, and the, the small science table is the small coffee table, and then if you can see, there's the big one. So I have this kind of for like just the, um, <coughs> so if they wanna get out things, like the math games and things, they can play it on here. So. so small large <laughs> and I think they're pretty cheap like I think this one was like $15 maybe um, but this is my new being a scientist pack um, and there's actually another chart to it and you can, that we're gonna make the first week of school but all these principles are all included in the pack and I actually had one of my kiddos she was over here during open house for like 15 minutes <laughs> she was so excited about the um the science table so and then in here is our stem our stem drawers so i do have some cards at the top if they want to um want ideas they can build that these things or a lot especially at the beginning of the year um they're just exploring the materials and that's totally fine too um and so the big this is how I'll start. So I'll start with just some of them full and then I'll slowly add different things um, and fill up the drawers that way. And then I love these. These drawers are from Michaels because they can just set them out and then they can build and then they can just put them away because they're really, really strong and sturdy. But just make sure you buy them on sale because they're kind of expensive. <laughs> and all of the stem is in my, is in my store. <coughs> And yeah, it's in the stem I can build back. That's what it's called, sorry, forgot. And then on my discovery shelf, we have a plant because you always need something living in your science area. And then I have my microscope. We'll go there when it's not at the science table. 
and then I have magnifying glasses that need to be dusted still, <laughs> ignore that, and then my science book, and then um, I have my little, these little caddies are from the dollar store, and I love them. They're like the perfect size for a preschooler. So I just have markers and some crayons, and then clipboards. That way if they want to draw or write about rocks or the magnets or the, the tubes or the magnet blocks or something, they can, just like a real scientist. So I try and have clipboards and um, writing materials in pretend and in blocks. Um, that way there's writing materials in all my centers. So I have rocks and then those, those are those Melissa and Doug blocks. And I just have the stem I can build cards on a ring in here just to kind of um, challenge them and to get them excited. Um, and maybe um, if they don't know what to build, they can look through there too. And then I just have some magnets. And I do also, I'm such a book person, you guys. I always throw a book in with all of my science buckets. Because you'll be surprised if you have a book in there, they are so much more likely to open it than if it's on the shelf. Um, and then I have these magnet blocks. And then these are those clear tubes from Lakeshore. And I do have a light table. I just, I don't want it out the first week yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm ready for that. But I, I do have a light table that I'm going to get out later this year. Um, so don't feel like you have to have everything out the first couple weeks. Um, keep them excited all year. And then just some, I have um, just some puzzles. I do have puzzles, and you saw I have puzzles in um, library as well. Um, so just so you know. So, because puzzles are so important, and I feel like kiddos don't do puzzles anymore. And then in my Discovery Center, I also have um, my sensory table, and my husband built this for me, and it was just, I don't really know how he built it. It was just off a Pinterest tutorial, and it's just PVC pipe. So it's like nothing fancy, but it was so much cheaper. And it's really nice because I can take this bin out still. It's just like, a, I think it's this is a Sterilite bin. And he just measured the bin I wanted and um, yeah, and it came with a lid. So I have a sensory table with a lid. And I um, I love using noodles at the beginning of the year. They're noisy looking. They're super noisy, but if they spill on the floor, they're easy to pick up. So that's why I use noodles at the beginning, and I just put in some little hand tweezers, which I got from Walmart. And then these are just like baby food containers. Looks like, oh, there we go. There's one of them open. And I like to just fill them up and fill them up with the tweezers, and then put the lid on. And then they can put them in. These are just um, some bottles. And it's interesting, because when they fill them up, the the bow ties will get stuck, so then they have to kind of use their fingers to get them out. So that's really a great, another great fine motor that I snuck in. But yeah, it's really kind of a loud motor. So if you don't like loud sensory tables, this one's not for you. But it's really great for cleanup. And under my sensory table, I keep apparently a cookie. Um, no, sorry, that's supposed to be in pretend. That's what happens when you have open house, right? When you find things random places. Um, so they, that way they can practice scooping up and I actually need to do this, forgot to do it, but I will tape a square onto the floor so that way they have a visual space to brush into and then they can scoot it in the tub. So another thing that I need to do on my to-do list. <laughs> All right, so that's Discovery. So again, Discovery has math and my science. In Discovery, I just color-coded it green. And then here's the block center. So I do keep these long blocks over here because they make me nervous when they're on a shelf because I feel like they're gonna hit each other in the head. But my block center is this shelf and then, trying to not to make very dizzy, this shelf over here. So I have my big cardboard blocks in there and then I have my I can build um, idea and challenges up on the bulletin board. <laughs> and I change those out for every theme. Um, and those are all in my stem, my combo pack. And then I have some recyclable materials to build with. So I have some cans and then animals. I usually just start with cats and dogs at the beginning of the year since they all love pets. And then this is how I organize my blocks. So I just do, oh, open house day. <laughs> I do all the rectangles in here and then I do the triangles in there. And then these are all the cylinders and then the squares. 
and then, oh, you can't see it. And then I just tape traces, or I trace the shapes on there. So that way they can match the shapes as they're putting away. So then they're sorting. And then I have some blueprint pages, and I have knee blocks, which I need to make new ones of. I'll do that after the first day. These are just jingle blocks with their picture um, laminated and taped to them. Nothing fancy. And writing stuff. And then tree, tree rings to get some nature. And then this is just row tape that I um, put on black cardstock and laminated so I don't have to tape up my floor all the time. And then just cars and trucks. I think these are Melissa and Doug ones. I think this is the community, community cars are in here. And then I want to say construction are in here and like just like the cars set. I probably won't, I, like I said, I need to go through before the first day and take some of these things out. Um, so everything won't be so full the first day. I also have the dollhouse, which is from Ikea. And then um, underneath I have accessories, which apparently they made, how cute did they make that little dollhouse for on open house? Um, and then I have furniture. And then I have people. And these people, they're like the new people from Lakeshore. And y'all, I, I really don't work for Lakeshore or anything. I just, their stuff's expensive, but I, it's really good quality. Um, <laughs> but they have these new people. And they're diverse and they're all different. But aren't they so cute? And they're like bendy. So they can like bend. How cute is that? And then I also put in some little, little cats and dogs in too. So yeah. So we have the doll house and then this shelf is actually from Target. All my other white shelves are from Ikea. My husband likes me to buy Ikea because he says they're easier to put together than the Target ones. And they're cheaper. And I think they're like better quality too. Yeah, so these are all Ikea. <coughs> and so I have coats and then I have some books. And then I have a look what we built. And like I have all the pictures in there from last year um, of stuff that they built. And then, cause I have some of the kiddos um, come back to me next year. So like I have two kiddos from last year in my class this year. So their pictures are in there so they can just look through and be inspired by each other. <coughs> and then again, I have the little caddy from um, the dollar store with um, some small clipboards. And these small clipboards, you guys, they love these things. They love them. They will get them out and draw or plan or write. And if they're not, then you get it out and you show them how um, to draw and write with them. But they love those little things because they're the perfect size for their little hands. And then I have construction hats. And then I have some tools. Um, and then like this toolbox is from the dollar store. And then I just have some tools. Most of these are from the dollar store. This is from when my kid was little. Um, and I got like I think I got this on sale after Christmas last year. Don't mind my spider web. And then I did buy we did a construction dramatic play last year. And I I did I did buy the Melissa and Doug construction vest. But if you don't have um, the money in your budget for those, um, go to um, what is it? I think it's Home Depot. They have aprons for a dollar. And that's what I used to have until last year. And those work great too because they're like tool, um, tool pouches. But they're just like regular aprons and they say Home Depot on them. But they worked awesome too. And then I just have some empty paint cans. These are from Lowe's with paint, um, paint six laminated on a ring. Free, right? And then paint brushes from the dollar store. And then signs. I want to say these are discount school supplies. I do love me some discounts. And then here's some more signs. These are ones I made. These are free if you go to my community helpers blog post. And then cardboard. I'm going to be honest. This is the cardboard that all my shelving came in. <laughs> and then foam. So they can pretend this is water or grass or mud. <clears throat> so yeah. So that's the block center. And then I usually have... Um, so this will come down and we'll make it together as a class the first day. This is the one from last year, um, but that'll come down and we'll make it again. That way when I'm introducing blocks, they'll um, help make the chart and um, <coughs> and that way when they help make it, then they'll reference it more and they'll just have meaning, they'll have some meaning behind it. Oh, somebody said, um, Joanne's flew by already. 
but Joann's has inexpensive construction vests. Oh, and so does Ikea, I think, too. I think Ikea does, too. Um, and the small little crates, this is pretend, um, but the small crates are like a dollar. I want to say they're from the dollar store or Walmart. I've had these for 13 years now, so they last. This is my 13th, lucky 13th year of teaching, so, right? Lucky 13, fingers crossed. So this is my pretend center. Super fun, right? Super fun, bright and colorful. I love bright and colorful, you guys. <laughs> so I have some babies. Apparently they undress them <laughs> during open house. Let's cover these little ladies up for men. Um, so yeah, so I got the, the, the dollhouse, or the bed is from Ikea. And then the, doll, the dolls are from Discount School Supply. And then on my pretend shelf, I have pets. And then I just put baby stuff together. <coughs> and then I have dog food and cat food, which is a yogurt container I covered in tape. And the dog food and cat food is pom pom. And then a dog bowl from the dollar store. Purses and wallets and little backpacks. Those are just from like the dollar spot at Target sometimes. And then sunglasses and boots and hats that I apparently forgot to put out. <laughs> and then I have a phone. This is obviously a phone from when my kids are little, <laughs> but it works. And then I have some books. This is another one in that series. This one is clothes in many, many cultures. And then I also have the families in many cultures books. And then I also have a visual, and this is in my Dramatic Play Home Living Pack. Just gives them some ideas on what they can do and pretend if they are stuck. So they'll just walk on over and look at it, and then they can check it out. <coughs> oh, Eileen dropped in a um, the freebie for my block center. Thank you, Eileen. Yep, so grab that, and that's a free printable um, for your kiddos so they can sketch in the block center. And then this is, so my kitchen is from Ikea and my ice cream. Hmm. And then my, my fridge, everybody always asks about it. I got it on like clearance last year. I want to say from Discount School Supply. And then this is my fridge. So I have some eggs and these are like the Melissa and Doug eggs that like you can cut in half, but they're Velcro. But I can't put back together now. And then I have just some empty bottles. Oops, sorry, empty bottles. And I just, I put paint on the inside. That way they look prettier. And they, that way if they don't know what it is, they'll obviously know this is ketchup when it's red and there's a tomato on it. Um, so like, but like my mustard one was already yellow, so that's nice. And if you have kiddos who, um, like one year I had a little lady who loved honey. So I saved a honey bottle and then um, put that in there too. So put things in your fridge that your kiddos eat to add environmental print and to build that relationship with them and to add their culture into the classroom. And then I have some pretend food. I did buy, um, I, I think it was like the diverse um, food set, which I thought was really fun. It has like shrimp in it and tacos. Um, it was from, I can't remember. I'll have to post it, but it has like shrimp. How cute are these? But just some different food besides like your typical stuff. But I love that. And then I have the felt pizza from Melissa and Doug. And then some of this is from um, like the Target dollar spot too. So it's kind of a mixture of a little bit of everything. So yeah, so there's the kitchen or the fridge. And then I have a pot holder from the dollar store. And then let me check the time. And then this is um, under the sink. I just have silverware and that stuff's from Ikea silverware plates. I forgot to put the bowls out. <coughs> and I actually probably will leave the bowls out and I won't have them out for the first couple of days back. And then I just have um, a cleaning set. The clock is in my home living set. And then there's some clothes. And I know everybody's gonna ask about the window. So it's actually, I just painted this like and then I actually folded it in half and laminated it and then just like cut it open. You know how if you, if you cut the edges, it'll open. So I laminated it, folded, and then I opened it. So I way all of it's laminated. And then these are curtains are actually just like a tablecloth. So, yeah. And they're just tied with ribbon. Nothing fancy. 
but it does make it really inviting. And then the table, these are placemats I cut in half. I think these are from like clearance um, from summer. And then these are two what, um, tick, um, end tables from Ikea. And I just put Velcro on them. That way they stick together. And then like, that way when the table moves, they like move together. <laughs> and they're like, they don't split on them when they're playing. And that way when we change themes, cause we'll change pretend out to pretend to different things. If I need to only use one table, I can't. So that works too. And then the chairs are again from Walmart. And then this side, I have just some utensils. And then I have the cleaning set from Melissa and Doug, but you can always make your own. I have the toaster and then the writing tools again. And this time I have shopping lists because they always love to pretend to go shopping when they're in pretend. And all of that, all the printables that you see in the home living are from the home living set um, from my TPT store. And there's a recipe book to add some <clears throat> literacy. And then I have a picture from the dollar store, some pots, um, a pizza pan, measuring cups from the dollar store, and a big bowl. Oh, and Patty wants the circle time rules. Those are in my TBT store. That's in my circle time um, rules um, pack in the character ed, um, in the character ed um, line in my store. And then I just have a mailbox. That way they can write each other's letters. And also too on my blog, I have a blog post on every center. Eileen was um, starting to put that in the comments. I have a blog post on pretend. I have a blog post on blocks, discovery. I need to do the library blog post. <laughs> um, and I have one on art. So let me give you a backup view. So this is art. <clears throat> the, I'll go, start over here first. So I have a big table in the middle and my tables are from Discount School Supply, I think. Oh, thanks, Molly. Everybody's saying, they love my classroom. Thank you, guys. And, and I know I have a lot of stuff because I've been teaching for 19 years and I am that teacher who buys everything all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> um, my, my easels are from Ikea. They always stay like this. That way they can talk to each other as they're painting. This is just a bulletin board strip. Because I don't know about you, but I have shorties who are never going to be able to reach the top. So that way... Um, they can clip their paper on the bulletin board strips that way they can do it independently and they can use the easel visual routine to help them out so they know what to do and then I do cover my easel this is just like a sh curtain from the shop uh, shower curtain from the dollar store that way um, it doesn't make a mess and it's easy to clean and nope, I do not have paint out the first week I do have the paint cups ready to go so parents know it is coming but not that first week, no way. <laughs> um, we do a whole circle time on paint. And then this is my art center and I just have um, under construction because I'm gonna hang up their work that first week or that first day. Um, and then this is my art shelf. And I think it's really important to have everything, um, everything in your art shelf should be, the kids should be able to access. So I know some, some people, um, not so much anymore, I don't think, but they used to have like kind of their teacher stuff in the art center, but everything in the art center the kids can use. So I have, and these are just those paper holders. I have colored paper. And these are just like paper and foam shapes that I just cut. And then here's just some stencils and then masking tape and scissors and tissue paper. Um, you can either cut it up yourself or buy those squares. And then these are just like paper letters to add some literacy. You can also do the foam letters. And then I just have punches, which are great for fine motor. These are, for, a lot of these are from Michael's. Um, and they're like the Fiskars ones. Because then when they grab them, they're strengthening that um, grip. So they're great for fine motor. And they love those things. And then of course, dot markers. You gotta have dot markers in your art center. And then books, gotta have books and colored pencils and glue sticks, crayons and markers. <clears throat> and I forgot to take those out. <laughs> I had it actually turned around for a different activity for the library center, um, but I'll take that out. And then once I have the kiddos' pictures, I'll put their name cards right here. That way they can use their name cards. They can pull them off when they're um, doing, doing pictures and things. They can use that to help them write their name. 
And then apparently I need to teach kiddos what the scrap paper jar is. Because <laughs> it's not for their extra projects. But that's okay. Um, so we have scrap paper. And those signs are a freebie on my blog. Scrap paper. Extra lids. Which saves us so many times. Because when they can't find their glue stick lid. They can just grab an extra one. These are old markers. And the sign fell off. So we can make watercolors with those. And then I have art smocks. And that's that big easel paper. And then I have some sensory bottles. And then those... These trays are those, like, oh gosh, I don't know. They're from Discount Soul Supply or Amazon. Oh, who's, oh, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to read the comments, but they're going so fast. All right, and then I have trays, and then these are the trays I like to use for Play-Doh, because they have, like, a lip on them. And then... They're in the dollar spot right now, and you can actually buy them off the website. And then I have a whole bunch of tools, which I will take some of these out again. Um, but they have, like, the little rolling pins from Walmart. And I have a couple buckets of Play-Doh. Um, and I've been really horrible the past couple of years. I haven't been making my own. I've been buying Play-Doh, but to each their own. I usually make my own, but this year my life was crazy, so I just didn't have time. And then tissues. And then I usually have my Play-Doh tray right here, so I went ahead and put the label out. But So I usually have um, a Play-Doh tray right there um, based on our theme we're using. And then this space, um, for every theme, I usually have one art project a week they can do. And um, I usually have that right here. So that's kind of why those spots are empty. And then those are our sign-in sheets from Open House Leftover. How cute are those? All right, so I'm gonna keep going. So you can kind of see a back of the room. So there's art, library, circle, discovery, blocks, pretend. And then, oh yeah, I have the two tables in the middle too. And I have, um, <clears throat> I can have up to 10 kids a day according to the state. I'm um, capping it at nine. Um, so yeah, because I don't have a teacher with me every day. <coughs> and then there's, and then I'm gonna show you the kitchen. So um, I have our journals ready to go. And these are my name cards I just printed two to a page. And so those are all ready. And they didn't have all my colors, so we had to kind of do with it how we did, you know. Like we didn't have a teal one, so, so I put it on green. So I try and color code my kiddos. That way um, it helps them figure out their name. So they, like maybe they're, here I'll walk over here while I'm talking about it. So you can see, hold on. In. We had some kiddos make some fun projects at open house. Mm -hmm. So everybody has their own color except for Jude and Charlie are the same color. Um, but that way, like if, let's say Tatum doesn't know um, her name, she can walk around and find the one that's orange with a T. That way she can find her name. Oh, oh yes. Christina wants to see my sign sheet. I will pop back over there in just one minute. I know I do have a really big room. I'm very, very lucky. Um, this is my basement. So we just made it made it as big just in case it wouldn't be a preschool one day. Um, this big shelf is from Ikea. So I keep the kids' cubbies at the bottom. And this is the kind of stuff that I grab. So it's kind of like my teacher shelf desk-ish area. So I have like sound buckets, portfolios, all my binders, assessment stuff. I have letter manipulatives that I use a lot like their name mats and things. I have those prepped and ready to go. I have math manipulatives. I have a big bucket of Play-Doh, smaller trays. Those are used for journals. And then this up here I use a lot too for small group. So I have like, um, these are letter stamps. These are dry erase pockets, dry erase boards. And I also keep little buckets in there with the dry erase stuff. That way I don't have to grab that in another spot. Um, chalkboards in there. It's chalk in there. And these are just magnet boards. These are chalkboards. And I just um, did chalk paint with these. And if you hop over the blog, I have a tutorial for that. Oh, thanks, Eileen, for dropping the link for the sign in sheet. The stars are free in my TBT store. And then I have my portfolio um, so I can like file everything. Um, and then I can put it in there. 
portfolios, which I have all ready to go, even though they're empty. <laughs> so yeah. So those are those. And I do have a whole video on assessments. I hope have a whole video on portfolios and I'll drop my video link at the bottom when we are done. And yes, I am in Winsville, Missouri. <laughs> and then this is um, my, um, another bulletin board area. I'm really good at some things, but bulletin boards, I am at. So that's why my bulletin boards are just clips. I'm not good at the fancy letters. I'm not good at the cute bulletin boards. So I know that's not my, it's not my jam. So I make it pretty by just clipping their things on. And I think that's okay. I think whatever you know is not your jam, whatever you're not good at, or maybe isn't your favorite thing, don't, don't make yourself crazy over something that isn't, I mean, bulletin boards are important, don't get me wrong, but they will not make or break your classroom. Having kid art on the wall and having their work on the wall, that will make or break your classroom community. So think about that next time you're stressed. Like, is this gonna make or break my classroom? How is it gonna help or hurt my classroom community? And if it's not gonna hurt anything, then just, just do it the best you can and don't stress what the person next door to you is doing or what the other teachers are doing because all the other teachers are making these amazing bulletin boards on Pinterest and I see it on Instagram right now. And I just keep going because theirs are beautiful, but they can, I, I, it's just not my jam. So that's my, that's my little, my little spiel. <laughs> so yeah, so that's my, that's about as cute as my bulletin board is going to get. <laughs> and I actually need to do this, but um, I'm going to put their name on their clip. So that way every kiddo will have their color-coded spot on their, on their thing. And I'm also missing a clip. So yeah, so there we go. And then this is my like parent, parent little section. And so if, there, if anybody is wondering about my bulletin boards, this is fabric from the fabric store. And then these are two bulletin boards and, that I hot glued together. Yeah, that's why I'm not gonna change my bulletin boards for a while because that was, that was tricky. <laughs> and then again, I make things easy on myself. This will be where my snack menu goes, and I didn't—I did not make it yet because I wanted to check allergies first tonight at Open House. Um, this is where I put newsletters. I think these frames are in the Target dollar spot. This is our schedule, which is on my blog, and then this is our um, calendar, which is taped to a piece of paper. I am super fancy. <laughs> All right, so there's that, and then there's the sign-in sheet the parents do every morning. I have my business cards in there. I have pens in here that a kiddo made me. And then the parent mailboxes. And I do have a thing for medication forms and extra handouts and envelopes so, so they can pay tuition. And then in here, I just have office supplies. Thank you cards, those are always important to keep on hand. And then this is like all those random things that you need. And then this is paper. And construction paper in the back sorry there you go which you can tell that drawer is heavy because it's like breaking on me and then I have more paper down here and I have cut paper notebooks and then down here this ooh, almost fell this is all of the stuff for my portfolios so that way I have it printed and ready to go and I can just grab it and I actually already did it I just haven't put them in yet, but I have all their dividers ready to go. It's super staticky down here. I have all their dividers ready to go for their portfolio, so I just have to pop them in there. So yeah, that's what's in my filing cabinet. And those are the only two filing cabinets I have. The other ones are full of stuff from like billions of years ago when I first started teaching and they probably need to be pitched everything since I haven't touched it in like five years. All right, and then here is our open house scavenger hunt. Um, this is actually an edit editable freebie on in my TPT store. And this is just what I do for open house. I know some people were asking. It's just a scavenger hunt, and they basically just find everything in the room. They do the morning routine, like the kid, the parent signs in, the kids sign in. They find all the centers, um, and I do a family portrait. That way, I can use it for different projects during the year. And then those are state handouts in case they need more of those or state forms that they need from me. And then I just have our calendar and our day. 
I, they, I already sent that home to them. Um, so that way, I, if they need an extra one or if they lost it, they can grab it. So that's my open house. I don't do anything fancy. I don't have any snacks. <laughs> like, that's it. That's all I do. Because that's enough. Like, that's plenty to keep me busy. Because I have to do all the reforms. This is my bucket with my accreditation binder in case I need anything from there. Or need to reference anything. And then I have their personal folders. So I can put their forms right in their folder for open house. All right, and I don't have a teacher desk, so this is kind of like my teacher desk, because I'm gonna, I don't cook for preschool. We don't serve any, um, <coughs> we don't do any lunches or anything. And typically my computer is not there, but it is tonight. <laughs> um, so I have my glitter and my washi tape and then my permanent markers where the kids can't reach, flare pins, and just some decoration. I think these are from the dollar spot last year and pencil sharpener and my tape, of course. And then I'll open my drawers for you. I have Play-Doh stuff and bags in the bottom. And then this is all my painting goodness in the second drawer. And this is all of my sensory tools and stuff for um, pretend. I'll just scooch over here. This is like ribbon and hot glue and crepe paper. These are like bowls and like random things that I put in pretend. <clears throat> and then this is like yarn, beads. This is like a lot of my stuff I use for my writing trays, like different sand, water beads if I make those. And then this is kind of like my go-to for art-ish. So I have like my multicultural crayons in here and glitter. So that way I can just grab the bucket and put them on the table like they're already ready to go. You can just grab the bucket for a group or table time or whatever it is and go. And then this is the, just some collage squares I have pre put in bowls so I can grab them. And then eyeballs and little containers, ribbon, tape, foam, goodness. And those are ink pads. Alrighty, and I'll keep going. And then I have kind of sensory stuff up here. I have like slime and straws and glue and chalkboard paint from like five years ago. And then all of my cleaning stuff in there where the kids cannot reach it. And then this is where all my food goes and like I have my, my licensing things. I just tape it in there. So this is where all my food will go. <clears throat> and then my food goes in there too for snack. And then in here I have like cooking stuff if we cook in the classroom or like more, you know, salt and things in my Play-Doh pot. And then there's just more, these are like paper things from, you know, like parties and those are what I use for usually like grandparents day and open house that I forgot to put out tonight. Canned foods more sensory stuff and then I'll kind of show you what's down here so you can still see like I'm still labeling like all these labels are in my label pack in my TBT store if you want to grab them I'm still um, putting them on everything and then this is kind of like my first week tub that if, as I find things I need I'm printing it or making it and pulling it in here so that way when I actually do pull out my lesson plans I can just plop everything in here that's my tray I used the first week. And I need to make sensory bags, new ones. So I bought a whole bunch of hair gel. That's kind of like my junk. And then I put keep sign-in sheets at the top. And this is kind of like my teacher desk. So I have my laminator. And oh my gosh, you guys, this is my favorite thing. <laughs> like, look at that. <gasps> look. So that way when you like, I don't know about you, have you ever had to laminate with a big tape? I have to every once in a while. And it's horrible. So this is like my new favorite thing. Like it's awesome. And then I have my lamination caddy. So if I want to sit upstairs or, you know, sit at the table and then I, I can do all that. And I have Velcro dots, Velcro, scissors, tape scissors, all my book grains and my stapler all. So I can take it with me if I want to do it somewhere else. And then I have my lamination pouches and my, what are these? Page protectors. And then I have paper right by my printer because that is one of my 
sheets and then I have a laminate and a cut file. That way it makes my life easier when I'm prepping. And I wanted to show you guys this trick. So I use these labels for all kinds of things. So um, I make a set on the address size, then I make a size, a set there on the small size. Um, and they are 80 to a sheet, and then these are 30 to a sheet. But then I can go around and like label all kinds of things, and then I keep some on hand if I'm like labeling artwork or projects or parent gifts or anything like that. So yeah. And then in here, I just have baggies. And these are all of our snack things. These are all just from Ikea. And then just more snack stuff. And then, you know, all the paper products are in here. As I keep turning around. Okay, so that is my classroom. Do, 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 do. Now here is my safe place. And this one's going a little bit long, but that's okay. Um, my safe place has all of my goodies in it. And this is my feelings chart, my problem solving solutions chart, and my calm down choices. And I, um, if you're shopping back to school right now, you might see these pencil pouches, but they are so relaxing. Um, and I, so I grabbed one of these pencil pouches for, it's like that mermaid fabric, um, for my calm down spot. So that way it's something new and fun. And I also, um, my one little lady, she's coming back to me, loves these squishies. So I got another one from the dollar spot. And then I found these on sale on like clearance. So I grabbed some of these because that... That looks calming, right? I think it's actually a timer, but I just got it for like a calming activity. And then these are my family necklaces. Like here's those stickers again. And then what I'll do is I took pictures of them at open house and I'll put their family photo on there. That way if they, um, <coughs> if they get sad or they miss their family and they can put their family on their, they can wear it and then their family's close to their heart. So sweet. And they double as name tags too. If you would have a substitute or something like that, those are great. I've actually done this for, this is my 13th year making family necklaces and families and kiddos love them. They're a hot mess by the end of the year, but it's, it's one of the things I'll do every year. They love these. And then this is my little itty bitty bathroom. I have sensory bottles here so they can shake them while they wait. So they have something to do, which you can tell I need to make new ones. Some visuals for hand washing. And one, two, stop so they don't kick all my paper towels. And then I do have a visual for the bathroom routine. And if you grab the bathroom routine from my store, there is one that has pants up and down <laughs> on there if you need that. And then in, in my closet, I have cleaning stuff where the kids can't reach. And then I have bathroom boxes. And these, again, are those, um, those stickers. So that way I can just put them on and just be good to go. And that way everybody has a bathroom box. And then the, that's where I keep like the winter stuff that I kind of have class sets of and ignore the dust bunny at the bottom. All right. So now that's my classroom. I'm going to take you into my storage area. And remember, this is my house. So um, and I had to put an extra light in here so you guys could see. So this is something new I've added um, because I bought more stuff <laughs> this year. So I'm get, I bought a light table, so I bought some stuff for the light table. So this is kind of where I'm keeping all the extra stuff. And you can see, like, I don't have my labels done. Um, but, like, I need to put all the labels on all these things. But these are all in my label pack. Um, and then storage. So I kind of have all my, like, language. I'm trying to move it all out here so I can grab it easier and make it more organized. And in tubs. And I bought a whole bunch of tubs this year. Um, so I can grab it and then not have to like walk very far because I don't want to leave the kids obviously and then on the back of my door I love this trick. I um, That's my tunnel for gross motor when it's raining because I don't have a gym or anything and then I we play hockey with pool noodles and then I have some beach balls just on like a hook thing. So there's that and then I have some yoga mats and bowling. And then you guys are going to laugh at me, but I have my, my kid's baby bed, and it's all containers <laughs> and lids. And I know, I'm a little crazy. And the filing cabinet is empty. And this is my bookshelf. So I finally, after 12 years, I finally organized my bookshelf. And it took like three days. 
Um, and I, I do have a lot of books. Um, but all of these are free on my blog. So yeah, I, I, I know, I know everybody always says I have too many books. Like I have a lot of books. And then this is all like, <clears throat> all that, you know, like notebooks. And it's cheap. <laughs> um, during back to school, I have pretend and copy boxes at the top. And then I also have pretend is kind of leaking over this year. <laughs> Um, that way I don't have to drink jug from construction site. So sorry it's a little dark in here again. It's my basement. Gym for 13 years. So this is 13 years of dollar store trips and Target dollar spots. So just some more games and puzzles. And I do have two kids. So their stuff is, as they're getting bigger is slowly coming down here. Um, and they're boys. So I have lots of boy things now. So yeah, all the block stuff is kind of down here. Dramatic clay is down there. And then at the top. And again, I've been teaching forever, so I have a lot, and I've collected a lot. And then I just have a whole bunch of sensory stuff, and you guys, all my sensory stuff, it's dollar store, and then a little bit's from Ikea. So this is all like dollar store collection, and then this is just empty containers, like, I love these yogurt containers. We use them for so much stuff. And then the only other place I have to show you is my office. And I'll be honest, I do not use my office for teaching. This is mostly for when I do for my blogging and I use it for storage. So if I'm taking pictures for my blog or something like that, um, I do it in here. And this is so this is more like my blogging area for like when I'm doing setup and when I'm prepping or taking pictures for the stuff when I put it, um, like the curriculum together, like I'll do a lot of it in here. That way the mess stays in here and I can still have a classroom out there. So this is kind of my blogging area, but I do have at the top, these are all of my themed printables. So like that's my gingerbread unit and inside that I keep my, um, like I keep cookie cutters, straws, beads. Um, I keep a couple um, manipulatives of each thing. Like you can see there's like a little counter in there so when I do birthday I know to grab my birthday counters um, like here's fall so you can see I have some fall counters in there so I can remember to grab my stuff out of my other spot and then this is all of my character ed um, that is all in my TVT store that's a whole um, curriculum and then the, the bins those bins are from Michaels or you can get them on Amazon um, and just make sure you buy them on sale, otherwise they're expensive. But you can get them pretty cheap if you watch for the sale. And I swear they're on sale like every other week. <laughs> and then I have more manipulatives in here. <laughs> and I know I'm, and I have bought a lot of stuff this year because I'm not with my school district anymore. So I've had to buy the stuff that I'm used to. I have had to buy it myself. Um, so yeah, this is like all dollar store stuff, like Jingle Bells, little counters, like buttons, spider rings, golf tees. Um, and then these are all mini erasers. <laughs> I know, crazy, right? And then these are counters. So it's kind of like math up here and then fake flower forest up there. And then I have letter manipulatives and then all my trays. Like these are just, these, um, my Melissa and Doug cars came in. So that's where those are from. I love Melissa and Doug because they make really good stuff. And again, I don't make any money off of them or anything. Um, but I love the, all their wood trays they come in. Like here's all of my writing trays. Everybody always wonders how I store them kind of like this. <laughs> so here's like the writing trays I have. And they and I usually keep them with all different colors. Um, but these are, um, the trays are actually from lacing sets from Melissa and Doug. So yeah. So those are... This is kind of where I do all my blogging funness. And then I have my bins. And then all my counting shoes stuff. That's over here. And there. And then I have my literacy shoes in here. And I finally found the little letters from the Target spot for the literacy shoes. So I bought a bunch of them, as you can see. <laughs> I bought letters, numbers, and um, yeah. So yeah, so I got all my literacy stew stuff there, all the rest of my counting stew stuff there.
I know y'all think I'm crazy because I have a lot of stuff and I do, but it's, it's 13 years of dollar store and all of that. It's 13 years of Target, 13 years of dollar store. So if you're a new teacher, don't, don't be scared. You'll get there. Just slowly grow your collection. Like I said, like it took me until last year to organize my book. So don't think that, you know, like teachers who've been teaching like 10 years have it together. Cause until last year, until my 12th year of teaching, I didn't organize my bookshelf. So yeah, so just pick one thing a year, organize it and you'll be good to go. Um, but yeah, so that's my classroom. I hope you enjoyed the tour. It is now dark, so I can't show you the playground. But yeah, so I hope you loved everything. If you have any questions and I missed them, I'm gonna go back up after this is over and I'm gonna pop links in in the comments um, for you. I'll also pop in my link to all of my past Facebook Live videos. I will put a link into Amazon if you wanna grab anything that I have off Amazon. So I hope you guys had a fun time. I know this was a long one. Normally mine are around an hour. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.